the Niger Delta region has been described as the goose that lays the golden eggs. But years of neglect have led to the degradation of the region and subsequent administrations in the country have done little or nothing about it. Youths in the region have come in various forms of agitation, blowing up pipelines, adding to the degradation of the region. But President Muhammadu Buhari's administration may bring a turnaround to the situation if this meeting convened here is anything to go by. For over two hours, traditional rulers from the region joined the president, the vice president, state governors, ministers, service chiefs and other well-meaning citizens from the Niger Delta area to brainstorm on how to stop the constant destruction of facilities in the region. Here is how the leaders of the region tabulated their needs in the first part of the meeting. The 16 points included a, well, generally whatever we say, infrastructure development, um, manpower and uh, human resources uh, development. Um, and then of course you have to um, welfare of the people. At the last count, over six militant groups have sprung up in the Niger Delta region, the letters being the Niger Delta Avengers. Reports from some of the groups indicate that they may not be part of this meeting called by the federal government, raising doubt as to full representation here. They came for authority as their fathers to negotiate on their behalf since the 19th of August. Minister of State Petroleum has responsibility to ensure that Nigeria meets its quota in the oil market. According to him, following the meetings, Nigeria's production has risen to 2.1 million barrels per day. That would not have happened without all the efforts that went behind uh, through the royal fathers and leaders and through the militant leaders themselves. A lot of behind the scene engagement has taken place and will continue to take place. It's good that we understand the issue of military presence in the Niger Delta are separate from military occupation of communities. I don't think that our elders are asking for the military to be withdrawn from the Niger Delta because no. that, would, that would create chaos. No. What they request is that military presence or military occupation of communities should not be. But the military presence will have to be there to ensure that we are able to attend to all forms of criminality. This is just one in the series of meetings the government has designed to bring a lasting peace to the Niger Delta region. The next few weeks will determine if indeed the youths of the region have agreed to shit their swords and let peace reign as government says it is determined to meet the needs of the people. Chukuma Onwekusi, Channels Television News. Welcome back. Uh, let me go back to Mr. Okechuku. Mr. Okechuku, you said something about what the president is doing or what he has proposed to do. The president has been known to be a man of integrity and love people to continue to talk about the president's level of integrity. But is it the president, just like Norua said, is it the president that's going to be running around all these agencies? Is it the president that's going to be going to the Niger Delta to ensure that the people, the right people are selected to come in for negotiations. Because Tony has talked about the fact that it is the same old people that were negotiating years before that are still negotiating this year. What happens to the others that are not being carried along? Including the youth. As, as I said earlier, it bleeds my heart when I refer to that region. Because I'm aware of all the efforts made to bring that region to where it could have been. Uh, take, for instance, when we talk of Mr. President and his integrity quotient. Who on earth will tell me that President Muhammad Buhari will award $23 billion contract for execution of green fuel refineries, one to be located in, in Bayelsa? One in Kogi, one in Lagos. This was, this was a contract awarded on 13th of, of May 2010 by the then President Jonathan. And one year after, it did not take off. No agenda, no avenger, no defenders of the Niger Delta could, could say what happened to this. 
President Muhammad Buhari cannot award a contract 12 months after nothing has been done for that job. At a time when the excess crude account of Nigeria was $17 billion, we were in, in uh, the EFCC for a briefing. The chairman, Magu, he showed us clips. If you notice in the clips, I told him, I said, if you don't show it to the Nigerian people, then I will take you to court myself, and then I will resign my office. The bed, the bed in the Kosi house, Dizani, the then minister of petroleum built for herself. Can we just get you to not believe the point, such a, okay, Anybody can conceptualize to do such a bed in a region where there is, where there is no infrastructure. Buhari cannot contain that. I'm not saying that he should go from Gota to Gota. But the point of the matter is that the new sheriff who have his details on projects you told him you have awarded. The other time, I, I was briefing him, and I told him we are looking for four or five studios. He said when you come back next year... I've said to Mr. Tell President is that. known to be a man it's of integrity. He's going to step down. But, but is it, Mr. President, that's going to follow down to the region itself? Why, are we, why is it that is it the same... Old people, according to Mr. Ereku, that are coming to the table for negotiation. The same people that were negotiating years before, the same people that were collecting contracts before. That's what Tony has said here. Why do we go for the same old people? No, Ereku is, is wrong. Please, what happened? I, I told you earlier that we had a meeting with Ibe Kachiku, the Minister of State of Petroleum. He had done the nitty gritties. The meeting took place for over three good months before November 1. So anybody that thinks that that November 1 meeting is the meeting, is not the main meeting. The different regions, the people in the regions of different tendencies, they all presented their position that made the 16-point agenda. I don't know where Tony's group belong, but I know quite well, Tony Ranta and co, we interfaced with them because we were all involved. We wanted... Peace in the Niger Delta. If you, if you listen to uh, the, His Excellency Governor Okowa, if I, Okowa said yesterday or day before yesterday in presenting of, of his budget, that we are most hot, that we used to be number two in the derivation fund, but we are now number four, the Delta states, because, because of pipeline vandalization, and that we cannot do some of the things we, could, we set out to do. That is talking about the governor. Who was Secretary of Government of that state? He was a senator representing a, a, a zone in the state, and now a governor. And he's looking backwards with all the projections, the enthusiasm, and the plans. So the point we're making is not about, about the, trying to play blame games. We're saying that on, on a holistic basis, that what happened in the Niger Delta is about corruption, and that we should join the war against corruption on all facets. Okay. Even the villagers are required to report to the next level. Nigerian data indigenous are not different from humanity. So anybody that says nothing can work there is, is being far from the truth. Mr. Kichiku, we, we need, we need to wind this. down now. So we'd like you to take your last word. So how can we begin to end this crisis in the, in the Niger Delta? The crisis, the solution is afloat. Projects, projects. And that's what the transport minister, Rotima Mechi, is also planning his own way. He is the one that insisted on the coastal rail line and other port facilities that is going to go on there. There will be a lot of jobs through projects. The boys are idle, the girls are idle. I want to bring the poor people out of poverty in the Niger Delta. We also want them to, to hook up on the social intervention program. Okay. The social Thank intervention you. program Thank can you, open Kichiku. a new vista. Mr. Edopolo, your final word on this, how can we end this? Or how can we begin to wind it down? There's so much to say, but I just want to make what I consider to be the very pertinent point. Just give us the bullet points. Yes. There is, beyond projects, there is a mindset issue that must be dealt with. The people of the Niger Delta have this feeling that the rest of Nigeria does not respect or regard them. There is hardly any trust between the people of the Niger Delta and the rest of Nigeria. So whatever the government is doing, in addition to projects, there must be a foundation of 
confidence building, trust building, such that they feel as, you know, you get the impression that if we didn't have oil, we could have an abandoned. That's very dangerous. Yeah. It's a good thing that we are fixing the Northeast. We should do that because humanity demands it of us. It's also a good thing that we fix the Niger Delta because humanity demands it of us, not because they produce oil. Right now, it's as though if we could put a pipe from Abuja and drill that oil, we'd just leave you guys the way you are. Now, is that correct? That is not correct, but that's the perception. So government must address that perception so that the people of that region begin to feel a part of this entity called Nigeria. Tony. My last word. Uh, well, um, <clears throat> I don't really have much to say, but um, um, we, I came from a very small ethnic group, the Chekri. And um, <clears throat> if you say Niger Delta, they will call the Ijoz. The Ijoz represent us. You understand? So we, the Chekri, we want to like let other group learn from us. The Chekri National Youth Council, we just like we are new on board so they just called me and said look we need you we need your face because the people that are shouting for the right thing to be done they will take that person and take his name to EFCC or they will lie against him that is why my group called me you represent us in Shakri National Youth Ambassador and also Shakri National Youth Spokesman worldwide so you say the truth the way it is. And I will say the truth the way it is. Because the whole Nigeria, the whole world know me. So which, as, what's, what do you want done? Fine. Quickly. Fine, fine. <laughs> what I want the government to do is to focus on the youth. The youth restiveness in Niger Delta as a whole. In fact, if you can look around, you see that Niger Delta youth, they are, they are facing deep 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 problem okay you need to shorten this and make it one sentence if you can okay what i need is that let the federal government concentrate on the youth okay the youth. thank you very much we'll be yes. speaking with Noroi dr law development consultant mr tony mufe reku of the shakiri youth national youth council, council and worldwide and Osita Okechuku, thank you all for coming on the show. We'll be back in a moment. Please don't go away. <laughs>